The UBC is produced by Backgammon Galaxy. Play among the stars. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. Hi there. This is the amazing team who made the UBC production that you're watching right now. You can support us by donating any amount using the YouTube Super Chat. Just click the dollar icon in the chat window to get started. Donate $25 or more to get our eternal gratitude. Donate $50 to get a personal shout out by Mark Olson in an exclusive video. Donate $100 to get a signed copy of the event poster and a shout out. Thank you so much for your support. Get the limited edition signed poster by donating $100 in the YouTube Super Chat. Your donations will support the hardworking team who made the UBC a reality. Thank you so much. What's up, Backgammon fans? We're back to, from the UBC tournament here. We're at the final, Mochi versus Dirk. And uh, Nick, this is exciting stuff. What do you think about this final? Uh, I'm super excited to watch the, the Backgammon go down here. We've been hanging out in Istanbul waiting for this for a few days. Um, got to do a lot of like sightseeing and promotional kind of work for the the tournament too. It's been really exciting, and I'm just, I think everyone's ready for some backgammon, especially Mochi and Dirk. <laughs> I think so too. Uh, we had a great day yesterday. Uh, we went yeah. to Galatasaray Stadium. Yeah. We went on a beautiful boat trip. Uh, the FM Gammon team, the Fuad especially uh, from the Istavda the Federation, he's really taking good care of us here, and uh, we we shot some great uh, promotional. Uh, footage. Yeah. So I think we're almost ready to to begin now. The players are starting to. Yeah, they're making their way to the room. Yeah. Entrance. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be playing on the earth board, Nick. Oh, like we sweet. did last year. Yeah. Yes. I saw it up there. It's really like uh, set up nicely. There we go. The it's, earth uh, board. I still love this design too. Even after going to the FBEM office and seeing all those different prototypes they have and stuff, that was a right. really cool experience. We went to the. Yeah. the Backgammon factory, <laughs> where the FM Gammon headquarters, and it's just like full of different backgammon boards and prototypes yeah. and different colors and different designs. But yeah, the, the earth board seems to be a classic. Oh, here, here we, we go. Yeah. Here we go. We've got Dirk coming in on the right and Mochi on the left, and we've got Hossein helping out on transcription with Michi's help apparently there. Yeah, okay. I think Michi has been degraded to transcription assistant. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, Hussein Paknahat is the official transcriber, but uh, <laughs> Michi has uh, basically uh, cage side tickets for the UBC final. So he's a VIP. Beautiful. He's going to be doing analysis videos uh, during the next 12 days. Oh, cool. He's going to be analyzing the blunders yeah. from Mochi and Dirk. We're probably not going to see too many of them, but right. if we do, Michi is ready to analyze them. Mochi talked about that in the interview a little bit, and then we got kind of having some conversation just about some statistics he had with practicing against XG and just uh, some really interesting insights. He, he mentioned that if you're playing against XG or perfect play, that the most common score in a seven-point match is two to zero. Okay. You wouldn't think of it, right? That's fun. So two right. to zero is much more frequent than one zero. And he expects that to happen here because XG doesn't lose its market. Uh-huh. <laughs> just play it. actually makes sense. So we're off. Right. Yeah. We've kicked off here, standard opening play. Yep, we always hit we on hit the ace it. after the six split. Yep. Yes, that's oh, right. Deuce. Okay. Deuces, that's a great shot. Yeah, it's going to cover, right? I mean, you don't want to give a good six, but uh, having a point just feels more important. I'm 100% sure that Mochi is going to cover here. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to take a second to think about it. Both of them have been very patient and waiting to get their play, play their first match here, so I know he likes to take his time kind of getting ready a lot of times. and. It makes sense. Yeah. Uh, game one syndrome is definitely a real thing. Yeah. And uh, they just had to walk to the board, take photos, all that stuff. So he's probably just being methodical. Yeah. Making the five point seems very natural. This this game is developing pretty simply, but that, that blot for Dirk on the ace is a little bit of a confusing factor. Yeah. Now we're going to see a blitzing move from yeah, Dirk. Course. So now we essentially have a prime versus blitz. Yeah. Mochi is... Uh, playing for the priming game plan here with a beautiful pure uh, prime yeah. gap one gap four prime he has the rack as we say when we have the four five and six point made hmm. and Dirk has a blitzing formation because now he has the ace point made now which ace does it 
I think you like to stay back in container. That's kind of the thought. So six to five seems natural, but you never like to push those checkers further forward on your structure, really. So it's, it's a little bit of a technical thing. I yeah. think he's duplicating uh, six four with mm. this plane. Oh yeah, yeah, it does six very Six four clearly. is a tremendous role to make the bar point anchor. That's a great and reason uh, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I guess there. I mean, there must be more sevens to hit and things like that too. But okay. That's a poor roll. Uh, yeah, so he sees that the three is going to have to be that, and then does he want to clean up the blot and avoid leaving the double shot or anchor? And look at this. I, um, it's hard not to play the deuce first and just make that anchor. But he did say in his interview beforehand that he knows that he makes the 22-point anchor a little too often. Yes, this he's is like looking a at it. theme that he studied. And look so, at, the, look yeah. at the XG analysis, Nick. It's big. It's, it's very, you yeah. You are not supposed to make the anchor here. The problem is that you leave a double shot yeah. and the race is close. Yeah. So you don't want to leave a double shot when the race is close. Yeah. So this is the way to go. And the double shot really punishes, like it helps escape a checker. So he gets to like work towards his main plan, Mochi would, while hitting with tempo, you know? That's right. So there's a lot of problems with it. And he, this is pretty sharp to see. I feel like this is a difficult thing to even consider. Like, like I said, I just, I, it's, it's hard not to start by making the anchor. That's right. This yeah. is a difficult play for a human because yeah. the anchor just looks so strong. Mm-hmm. It's the anger at the edge of the prime. He does find the best he play. He finds it. That's sharp. Good now, play. Now, Moshi's got a cube decision here. Um, leading in the race, he doesn't have an anchor. He has the better board. But he's got two problems to bring home. That's so, right. So, like, how are we going to lose our market is kind of the question. I guess we Well, might, yeah, he could ahead. lose his market. Yeah. Rolling like a 5-2 followed by a fan. Mm -hmm. I feel it's a little bit early. Uh, the race is rather close, so he doesn't have a significant advantage in the race. He... Does he have a blitzing advantage here? Well, yeah. maybe, but he also has a good blitzing yeah. position. He has a three-point board versus three-point board. Sure. So it really comes down to the racing game. Oh, sorry, the priming game plan of mm -hmm. Mochi here. That's where his big advantage is. Yeah. Is that enough to double? Okay. And so if he rolls the 6-4 and makes uh, the the bar point, is that enough too? Yeah. And, and yes, that was a really quick, quick take. I think that Dirk had the easier decision there. Yeah. It might be a double. Three uh, one oh, oh look at this! Very close. Very yeah. close, according to three flies. Just the, the the deep analysis is not the yeah. the deepest analysis. We call it deep in XG. Yeah. The three ply, but oh, here we go. That's a great shot. Very nice. I was kind of wondering after the three, if he anchors and Dirk doesn't perform, that could be a market losing sequence. I'm it could sure. be actually. Yeah. yeah. It might be. But of course, Dirk's in this game now very solidly. This is uh, this is going to just safety a blot, I think. And he's he's got the racing game plan now if he that's can escape right. that back checker. And that's why he's looking at playing 24 to 22 to come up with that back checker. So let's see when we get the hint from uh, the transcriber here. Yeah. The PR you race is awful Really? Close. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't see this. I, I guess you yeah, have no. your opponent on the bar for some flexibility, but I, I just don't see a reason to leave shots. So I'm just cleaning up the blot. And typically, this step close. with one checker, the step 24 to 22, it, it uh -huh. feels like it's going to gain you something, but really it tends to hurt more. Eventually in the game, they're happier to attack you there, and they never want to attack you on the 24. So you just that, wait for a 6 and just kind of come out. Yeah, but you're, you're only mentioning one side of the coin here because yeah. the pro side of the coin is that you, given you have the race lead that, as he has here, you want to be ready to jump out. Yeah, but... Now he gets punished. <laughs> this yeah. was the downside. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a small mistake, a 22 yeah. millipoint mistake. So not a, not a big one. Yeah. That's a fan. We couldn't see the diagram. Oh, wow. And March, Mochi's back in control oh. of this game. That was a bad fan for... Yeah, where's the Dirk. ace after our five? Um, Who's I ahead in the race it, now? It just must be 23-22. I think so. Even um, though Dirk yeah. is leading, I think you want to step up. So yeah. you can jump with a six. It's yeah, not nice to get Dirk primed. Dirk is leading the race so far. Um... Yeah, yeah, more numbers to escape, and oh, I don't see why you want to leave more than the 2-6. You we know? were actually wrong, Nick. Oh, really? You're supposed to... 12 it's super points. close. <laughs> I wonder, I'm curious to see on plus plus there, too. But, yeah, why would that be? I guess it, if you're down in the race, then you do want to make the more it's, pure point, right? Yeah, that's and right. Like extend it's, the prime. Exactly. It's uh, maximizing your own prime value. Yeah, that's hard mm. to find, though. Look how well he would be off now if he had the slot on the 7 point rather than the 8 point. That's so fair. he could make the, the 5 prime. Yeah. Aces, uh -huh. this must just switch. Are we going to see Mochi switch game plans here? Yeah, Going I think from a prime to a blitz formation. For lack of any option. I guess he could play 8 to 4, but that feels a little strange to like give him a chance to roll a 6 and escape. Yes. Maybe it's reasonable, though, because like, how do you follow up uh, after the blitz? You only have 9 in the zone. Hmm. The I might like this better. Mm, yeah. 
the problem with the, the passive play here is that you give the, the full roll to your opponent. Yeah. So six, any six will escape his prime. Sure. And there's the blitzing attack, like with 5-2, yeah. double five. Uh, so not too many rolls, actually. Exactly. That's, That's what I was about to point rolls. out is that when I look at the, uh, the offensive side of the board for Dirk, um, uh -huh. giving him his full roll is not that productive on that side. So you get less value than usual out of the switch. And it's very difficult to follow up on. If he rolls a two or a three, he's still threatening to come out just as much. Yeah. And sure enough, yeah, yeah. this is uh, 22 to 21 with it. That's interesting. That's an interesting oh, yeah, little the best, it, technicality. So, yeah, yeah, the first question is whether we prime or blitz. So yeah. here, according to Super XG, close. it's close, but it's slightly better to prime. Yeah. And then the next decision, how do you play the fourth ace? Because the first three ones goes from eight to five. Yeah, and I don't think Mochi's even looked at that option. Oh, nope. here we go. Oh, yes. He sees now. He realizes that there is another variation. Okay, so he it's, it's one meal point. This it, is good to see be. though, because I feel like it, right. his like one of his main goals was to uh, come in and not have first game syndrome, like you talked yes. about. And I, I he feels sharp. He feels Just sharp. Watching yeah. this, I, I think he's spotting some some difficult things. Yes. Already. Yeah. Actually, every time it's been close so far, he's been looking at it. Yes, exactly. That's how you know you're on, right? Yeah, I think Dirk, even though he's outboarded, he. Kind. No, wait, he He's doesn't have the to. Race. I'm he not could sure play 8-6. He could yeah. play 8-6. Yeah, that's yeah. right. 8-6 yeah. to six is the best play. Yeah, I'm not sure. Confirmed. It's he's outboarded and he's up in the race. Yeah. So it's too costly mm -hmm. to get hit. Yeah. It seems pretty natural. It's. Uh, I think people get the inclination of not wanting to leave the the initiative with your opponent, but, you know, mm -hmm. Mochi found that play last play trailing in the race. And even, the thing so. is that Mochi doesn't have a blitzing formation. He yeah. has a priming formation. Mm -hmm. So this this role is a valid role. We play with the dice on checker. Yeah. Is this the best here? I, I, I think the four is down, or sorry, the three is down. And then do you want to continue to the six, or do you want to step out to the That's anchor? That's the question. My question. It's super close. And look at that. Yeah, I would have. Yeah, it was super close according to XG. I'm not so worried about being attacked, but yeah. I do really dislike being hit in the outfield. That's so right. So I kind of would have liked to and you, more attackers. And Mochi is the one down in the race. So there is mm -hmm. an argument for maximizing contact. Mm, yeah, he did release some contact, yes. and now Deer can play a little more comfortably in his inner board. And you get the attacker on the six point. Yeah. All of a sudden, Mochi would have had would have some blitzing value, not yeah. just priming value. Yeah. Now he's got ten checkers in the zone, but the tenth checker is not in direct blitzing range mm -hmm. on the eleven point, or sorry, ten point. Yeah. They're both doing pretty reasonably on time too. Doesn't seem like likely to get in big pressure in this match yet. Mm -hmm. So that's very helpful. Uh, double fours, what does this do? This uh, looks like it links up and consolidates a close race, but I guess given that he's only ahead one pip, which is like given uh -huh. the half roll, he's down three, is is this our best contact play? I think so. It actually, is nothing else, right? It, there's nothing else, and this is actually a little bit of a priming play. Look yeah. at this. Ah, yeah. he gets to clear it with he the He might four. not safety that plot yeah. all the time. A That's lot of true. rolls doesn't safety that plot. Yeah. But man, uh -huh. Mochi hates being in this spot with the cube on the other side. His equity must be negative, even if he's like slightly winning in the race, you know? The cube ownership is pretty valuable here. Yeah. And this, these are all like technicalities, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. Kind of a strike. Like, I guess I probably would have 10 to 5 and 4 to 2, but that's fine. Even though there's a little bit of contact, it's essentially nothing. So yeah, we're exactly. down to a, a race, an end game race. Yeah. And there's not too much check and play strategy here. There's a lot of cube strategy though. You have yeah. to know your racing formulas. Mm -hmm. And Dirk's gonna have a lot of, he's gonna have to think hard about this almost every role. He's just right in that, that window where he's gotta be sure of the, the exact difference and the exact pip count even to know when he's in it. That's so, right. Yeah. We just see him counting the pips here. Yep. And this is, yeah, this is, uh, this is the dream in Dirk's position. He's plus 355, did you see that, holding the cube? And minus 06 if he sends it, like, uh -huh. so clear, no double. But it's, it's interesting how valuable just sitting on the cube in this yes. position is. Now That's something... rolled a great roll, so oh, I think yeah. Mochi is a slight. Equ no, it's very close in yeah. equity, very, very close. Yeah, it's yeah. about 6%. And uh, even race, it's, yeah, it's huge. The cube ownership is yeah. about 6% win winning chances. That's how valuable it is. Yeah. It's not something I thought about as closely before I like got to read a, a proof copy of Dirk's book, and now it's just that's what I see. <laughs> yes. So what Nick is referring to is the just published, or is it even published yet? Dirk Schiemann's new book, is that the least theory one of backgammon. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, we have one copy in print here, and actually, yeah, I saw Mochi grabbing the book the other night and bringing it to his hotel room. So he was studying <laughs> DX's book uh, two nights before the, the the first match. Yeah, that just tells you how good that book is. I think. I really, I think it's going to be the reference for a long time. I really. It's do. essentially uh, one of the first true theory books of backgammon yeah where he def like really defines from a mathematical point of view con from a conceptual point of view the game theory of mm -hmm. backgammon yeah exactly it's just all the questions you might have looking at xg outputs it's going to help you figure out um all these they've had some interesting like yes, tactical so decisions was, with I the baron and bear we're, off we're, this, yeah. yeah mochi rolled a great roll just before and if he had the cube it would be a double pass but yep. now he's just oh the it catches up that's a strong roll. Yeah. And we're back to an even race. Dieg is down five. This is when you want to do the running pip count. Yeah, it can. It gets really complicated here, though, when you like start to clear the six point and you like lose track of if you use a six to take some off the five. And yeah, I don't know. It's like this is almost more EPC on Dirk's side, too, right? Like this effect, is not a pretty side. Pip yeah. Counting. yeah, I mean, effective pip counting is, is um, something as a tool that you use for deciding cube decisions. Mm. Mm -hmm. But even just like counting it's, the pips here is, is mandatory. So yeah. what I like to do is just w after I've counted it in, the, in a racing position, then I keep a running. This running is very count. complicated, having eight checkers versus eight checkers with oh. the wastage on Dirk's side. He's on roll. Yes. Of course, so Moshi's going to have some wastage. Too, I think so. Dirk has an X. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. It's, it was a little bit difficult to see how many checkers he actually he had. He rolled perhaps his worst, and now he's not going to have any decision. <laughs> so, uh <-huh. laughs> for sure. 6 3 is fine. Six, two three. checkers off. Yeah. yeah. How does he find 5 2? <laughs> I feel like Dirk's a master somehow of finding like these like goofy anti jokers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Not a good skill to have. <laughs> Okay, so Dirk here and now is this is a, like a three roll, three roll, right? He's basically up ten pips, but he has wastage. That's the problem. Yeah. Here. So it's kind of like a three, four, three and a half roll versus exactly three yeah. and a half roll or something like this. So it's got to be pretty close still. But Dirk might be. That was a good roll from Mochi. Yeah. Getting two off from behind and only having five checkers, the Mochi's a lot less one. likely to fall behind a yes, roll again. Yes, three one so. didn't hurt him, and most likely we're not going to see any cubes now. It needs a set or, or a miss. You oh, know? yeah. Mochi does have the 2 1. Yep. It does happen 1 in 18 times. <laughs> but yeah, not this time. Yet. And as predicted, we're off to a 2 0 lead, right? Yes. The most common 7 point match score <laughs> other than 0 0. <laughs> Mochi was right. <laughs> so far. <laughs> so far. Um, Roll I, out of one. I predict that it's something we're going to take notice of in this uh, series of matches, <laughs> Nick. Yeah. Join the UBC 2022 Contender Tournament starting April 18th and the Estafter Annual starting April 21st. I think so. I just never would have occurred to me to think about either. But just it's a testament to both of their like creativity as backgammon players and how innovative they are in the game, right? It's like they these concepts that I have no reason to think about. They're yes. just discovering about the game and sharing with people, you know? That's so, right. It's yeah. actually amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Dirk trailing, seven away, five away. Um, he's going to be a little more aggressive with the cube. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Moji's going to slow down too much, but it, it changes things a little bit. It does. Yeah. Uh, you already adjust. Even if it's just one zero, you start to adjust a little bit with your cubing strategy, especially in the gammon full positions. Mm -hmm. Those PRs are looking real sharp, too. I think... Uh, Dirk trailing a little bit with a 1.98 under a 2, and that's not going to be good enough. That's going to happen a lot, I think, in this match. So here, Mochi, I think he has to hit. Yeah, usually he's using the last checker and not making a board point, but that feels like hit and split. It's quite good. Yes, both yeah. hit and split, or even just hitting and playing up to the 7 point seems yeah. to be slightly better. Usually the rule in the third roll position is that whenever your opponent jumps into the outfield past your 8 point, you prefer hitting uh, rather than building the strong inner board points. Mm. If he's on the bar point, maybe you prefer to make the five point with three one. Yeah. So four six. He's just going to stick to. That. That's interesting. 
I guess that's the only play, but that's you don't really play. love... Oh, yeah, you jump out in front of a, a stripped midpoint, but you're trailing in the race, so it's something that pauses oh, me yeah. a little bit. But you um, didn't have any other, on other this plays. This is an interesting one. We can run to safety or make a point. That's I guess the right. point must be very good. Yeah. The point is good, but it does leave you with a bit of a stripped outfield and two back checkers, yeah. where the running play would lead you with an underdeveloped front position, but yeah. only one back checker. Yeah. And it was best to just make the four point. Which probably ninety nine percent of the yeah back end players would do anyway. C point make point right. That's a and look at this bit. trailing. Even though he's down in boardage too, he feels like he needs to do something. And this is the right play. He's got the right idea. It is. What because else can you do? That's right. What else can you do? He's got to play six and down There's to the eight and leave else. direct shots anyway. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That there makes sense. is yeah. nothing else. Yeah. And now Mochi thinks he might have a cube decision. At this uh, leading uh -huh. score, I wouldn't be thinking about it, but he does have a clear advantage. Four blots around, better board. That's right. There um, is some volatility here with all the blots. And he, maybe, has a, yeah. he has a developed structure. Maybe at an even score that could be, but I think at, at this score you have to wait. So now, I guess Mochi has the better priming structure, but Dirk, of course, uh, has the timing in that sense. Yeah, but, he has yeah. the timing, and he's more efficient. Oh, look well, at this. Well, that's a roll, huh? Yep. Lights out. Five I, prime. That's what you got to do. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> now we're not sure. Now we're not... Oh, uh, this is a great oh, shot that's from also Deer. A good shot. Yeah, he's... And he's, now Mochi's just got a small... This must be enough advantage. I, I, it feels like a cube, uh, but yeah. but he really... That was an equalizer. Th this is, he's got a lot of play now. That was a really good roll for yeah. Dirk. Um, Mochi has what I like to call a level three prime ah. formation here, which is basically the best possible prime structure. Level and three is what? Uh, like level one, two, level one, two, and three. Level three is like when you're priming formation is so strong that you're basically like a 90% favorite to win via priming if your opponent is not doing anything else mm -hmm. to you. But here, Dirk also has a good, maybe he, Dirk has a level two priming formation. Yeah. He even drops it. Uh -huh. He passes it. Uh, was that a drop, Nick? Uh, oh no, it's a big take. Wow. That was a, I would have got this one wrong, uh, right actually, because Dirk had a yeah. level two prime formation. And usually when you're only one level behind your opponent, yeah, you, I didn't. You, you should take. That's I didn't think about it the, too hard. If Dirk had been less developed, and yeah. he would only be like a level one prime formation, yeah, then you should drop because then now there are two levels apart. Interesting. It's, like, it's this new idea that I've been developing yeah. lately, and it seems to be very applicable in these kind of middle game positions where yeah. you're just comparing your offensive strengths against each other. I feel so like the, this was a very, very big blunder from Dirk. Yeah. The other thing that is really easy to underestimate, I think, in the, uh, in, in the prime versus primes is that Mochi was split, which seems like an advantage because he's at the edge of the prime and he can gain some timing and run. Yes. Those are all good things. But it gives Dirk like, uh, an unlikely secondary game plan of just attacking That's right. and buying time to try That's to right. escape. Dirk and when you have that, you have some blitz value, That's and right. that really changes things quite a bit. I agree. Yeah. So maybe if he's sitting on an anchor, it's too much, you know, and actually prime back there. But, if it's know. an anchor with daylight, yeah. it would be pass, probably. Yeah, yeah. Or ugh, yeah. probably pass. But if it's an anchor with no daylight, yeah. then it's like just level three versus mm -hmm. level two priming, and that's a take, yeah. usually. It seems like an uncharacteristic miss from Dirk. I'm not sure what, what would have convinced him that he should yeah, drop it. Yeah, I'm surprised, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised. I think priming, I don't know. Those have gotten, I've had periods where, where I get those right and then I get them wrong again. Like prime versus prime is tricky. You can find a oh, lot of yes. different ways to Oh, uh, yes. That's it. one of the most tricky. Yeah. Oh, look here. Mochi is scared of the blitz value of And this is, it looks like so, a prime, but this is by his rules that he's like, you know, his, his prime versus blitz uh, oh, look, this is lecture. The right, that's this right. Is exactly. Exactly. It. That's exactly. So this is interesting. This is the second best play. Mm -hmm. And and the play Mochi is scared of blitz, uh, the blitz value of Dirk yeah. here. He has eleven in the zone and a big stack on the six point. Oh, what a shot! But it was just the next second best play. Stepping yeah. up with two was actually best, and keeping yeah. your front position tight. Yeah. 
So but I think I, I expect Mochi has to make that because of his his uh, his prime versus blitz structure rule. Mm -hmm. um, again, it looks like a prime with with a four prime like that. Oh, look at but this! But the stack of five on the six is just too attacking. The only way you're not likely to extend your your prime like Dirk did here. Yes. So it's more of a blitzing position. He's more likely to try to unstack it and attack. But okay, yeah. I, I think so too. I Very also strong prime versus more. prime cube again. Again, we see a prime versus prime cube here. Yeah. The difference here, you can actually say that Dirk has a level three yeah. prime here, just like Mochi had before. A, a yeah. pure five prime with an egg, two checkers behind it with no daylight, that's like a devastating prime formation. Well, this just immediately feels like there's so much play against those two checkers back. Like, uh, how do yes, I pass this? That, um, when you look at Mochi's side, yeah. it's definitely a, at least a level one prime. It might even be level two because yeah. of DX two checkers on the 24. Yeah. Mochi has a good, pretty good prime here. I think so. I mean, it's actually very difficult to develop Mochi's position with that stack on the six still. Hasn't used it at all. It, it's not super easy, yeah. but it's also, it is doable because mm -hmm. He's going to come down with a 5 and make the 8 point. Yeah. He can flex with an ace with 6 to 5. Yeah. And he can even make some slotting plays or yeah. hitting hitting loose to extend his prime that way. Sure. And notice also that Mochi is actually down 7 pips here yeah. in a priming battle. The timing. That's, that, yeah. that's a timing asset. The way it's, that I see the timing is that, like, what can Dirk comfortably play on this next roll? Like, he, he can run He from has to the break back, something. But something's yeah. going to break, right? And if that's, he's not able to run... Then he's like dumping timing on top of the prime, which is not what he wants to do, and that's going to happen now. Yeah, right? that's right. So uh, yeah, has, something has to go here. And if sure he doesn't enough, roll we, yeah, well, we see the output here, even at oh, the leading score. Okay, let's intake. see it on XG plus. Let's yeah. see if we can get Hosein to. But this doesn't surprise me. It is the score decision as well. This four away, seven away. You are leading, oh, but you yeah. don't adjust too much. Like you really, this isn't. It, it might Good be take. slight, but it's yes. not like a three-way, two-way kind of sensitive score Agreed. where you might move a whole Agreed. notch. Agreed. You, you move, yeah. so you, you adjust, but not a whole lot. Yeah, one six is a great R shot, of course. That was yeah. one of the market losers Dirk was hoping yeah. for. Yeah. Now Mochi is in trouble. And this is interesting. Do we step up to the edge, or do we get the distribution with six I to five? I think we have to step up. Yeah. Oh, oh he's oh, looking at the that's back clever. game variation. The pure play is a little bit too cute. It feels too cute. Yeah, yeah, just step up so you can come up with sixes, so you don't or crunch more with sixes. And, and make the oh, point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Three one. That's an easy play, I think. Is hitting, it going to hit for sure? Hitting, or do we say for sure? For yeah. sure, we hit to extend the prime. You're fighting for the. But next you have to give up the, the eight to cover it. You don't really have a cover. Well, you still you still prefer to fight. Yeah. For the, uh, the battle at the end, edge well, of the relatively prime. Relatively close to me. Okay. I'd be happy to make that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> a fifty <laughs> mistake. Uh. Yeah. That's good for me. For these guys, <laughs> unacceptable. So we yeah. have it in red, right? And here we go. We kind of talked about this in the last game, about this alternate blitzing game plan when you get in these spots. Mm -hmm. But he's got a little bit of that here, and so he's going to hit it twice yeah. on the two and try to buy some time to improve his anchor That's or right. advance, whatever he can do. Blitzing can be a yeah. time uh, yeah. maneuver where you're this buying yourself time to try to escape that devastating prime of your opponent, but it's really looking, yeah. looking bad for Mochi here. So my inclination here, oh, I didn't even look at this hit play, but I was if I was going to hit, I was thinking about 7 to 4 for the hit and covering the 2. He's going to look at making the 3, but and the problem, all these are very close. You don't want to break the 7, that's why. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Oh, I mean, it's close, obviously, yeah. but that's the argument for, for the slightly less yeah. pure play. This but play he does here. have to stick with this attack against the prime. This it's, is his only option. It's, yep, it's still a blitzing move. Yeah. Like all the other candidates here, you just get to keep mm -hmm. the, the seven point, which is nice. I'm know? intrigued by how close 13 to 6 is. Again, like they're just like immediately yeah. receiving these things too. This is really impressive. And a fan, inopportune uh -huh. fan. Okay, the five's going to hit. Is it, We're just hitting. That's okay. the double tiger. Look at this. Three, three in the air. Bar. Yeah, yeah. Now, I think it's the play. Yes, yeah, it's, what the else play. Is there? it's the play. Yeah. Yeah. It's a clear play, actually. I think so. I think he's, I mean, this is the. Yeah. This is the bet he made. This is what he started, right? <laughs> yeah. So he's got to follow it through now. It, I think actually it was a pretty good roll, decent yeah. roll. Yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't go well. 3-1 is an excellent roll. And Mochi... Oh, and he's happy with this. This is a good shot. Oh, um, he doesn't do have we just timing. have to come out of the... I think so. It's so horrible to be stuck in a back game without timing. Oh, but you Look create five blots behind a five prime. Can oh, we really afford this? This is I brutal. I think so. I you mean, could just hit on the ace again or something like this. There's with four some checkers behind a five prime. Oh, he's scratching. He said, I would do the same as Mochi here. I think None you need of them to come okay. out. But everything sucks. Yeah, the it's position just can't hold anything but coming out. I think I agree right. with you. Yeah, yes. there's just no room. There's nothing worse 
to be stuck in a bad game where you're crunched. Yeah. It's just the word. It's like better to take the chance now. Yeah, these like nothing worth worse axioms or yeah. they're just like very difficult because there's nothing worse than having five blots either, right? So, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. It's, I mean, it's, I'm not completely sure here. I could, I could be wrong, but... They're all reasonable. Uh, yeah, and of course you the gotta simple come play, out. you just you come, come out. out. Yeah. Th this not too 13 to 7 is not a blunder yeah. due to the conventional, even though we have some strict XG settings here on the transcriber's computer uh, in terms of blunder uh, margins. Yeah. Usually we have 80 millipoints as a blunder. This is 65 millipoints playing 13 to 7. But it is that's that's a sizable mistake in checker play. Yes, yeah. This is one that I don't expect uh, Mochi or Dirk to make in general in this kind yes. of spot. Even though, I mean, this is very difficult, but Good I think play. he's going to find this. Good yeah. play, Mochi. Yeah, he realized yeah. the same things. I think he actually realized it in yeah. in one or two seconds, and then he just took some... Oh, okay, what did he do gonna there? Okay, hit his own checker he, and yeah. put it on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mochi corrects him. <laughs> Two, and now we switch, right? He's I mean, even though this is a pre like priming game, I guess there's no other play, so you just have to. Yes, you, you don't prefer to do this. You sacrifice yeah. a little bit of prime value to just gain a tremendous amount of blitz value. Look at all the blots. Yeah, that's very. Look true. at all the blots he's gonna pick up now, unless Mochi produces a double four or something. No, this yeah. is not gonna end well for Mochi. Yeah, and somehow so he found himself ah, a three points. You that hit, okay. Yeah, it's another it's builder, right? It's another builder. I like this. Yeah, this it's makes cool. sense. You kind of want to avoid leaving yourself with uh, a double four, but he doesn't. Double four is not that bad. So that was a great play by Dick. Very accurate yeah. play. People love to look Let's for the, the ghosts in the in the double shots. I can like, you know, I don't know. Usually it's just better to make something strategically working towards what you're trying to do, which is like closing the four, right? Mm -hmm. That's um, right. Worrying too much about the anti-joker. You can have a have an eye for it. Like sure. just make sure you don't do anything crazy. But usually you're right. It's yeah. usually worth getting an extra builder for leaving one in thirty six yeah. shot. Yeah. So what's our best, most productive play? Is it from the thirteen would give the only builder for the four to Again, make sure we attack. The, the most flexible move would be seven to oh, he's the f yeah seven to six exactly. Oh. That's the most flexible move. That's the most flexible move. I never look for these, but and this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The 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 reason it might not be good. Okay, we see the hint here. It's not correct. Okay, the reason oh. this is not correct is that you you okay he makes it. You might you might be sad about this play later on. Because yeah. maybe uh, Mochi comes in, and then you, you, you would have liked to have the priming value of the seven point. Yeah. Okay, here we go. We continue the blitz. So that was a mistake. I don't know if it was a blunder, but it was just a, a mistake, I think, yeah. from Dirk. I don't tend to see. I forget about that option to break the seven when they have two on the roof and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. It's tricky. Okay, oh, this he is automatically also, plays the two. Interesting. The eight point is, is not really... Uh, he kind of want to uh, Oh, clean this it is up. interesting. Now we got to try the switch, right? I think Dirk make, made a mistake as well, yeah. clearing the 8-point. It's a little bit too early to clear the 8-point. I don't know why you would do it. You yeah. can just play 17 to 15, you know? Yes. Um, but so I think the switch has to be it here. Uh, I'm not sure why. You can just buy the time to maybe hit that uh, blot on the 8. Why the, not? The, the argument for this play is that you get more checkers closer to your home board mm, and thereby save might save gammons. some gammas. But okay. the thing is you're, save, you're losing so many gammas anyway. Oh, I didn't get to yeah. see what the right play was. But Yeah, me neither. At least we can see from Mochi's PR that he didn't make a mistake. Yeah. So it was probably good. <laughs> it's very true. 15 to 13 is just a little bit better. You don't need to clear a clean up. Interesting. I'm not sure I would think about leaving the blot in front of that stack of eight, seven checkers <laughs> back he's got. How did we get here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Three, six. Come three, out. Three, six. Give up your back game. Yes. And now he's... Which was perfect play by Mochi. Right, exactly. It's the it right was, play, but you yeah. end up in this game and you're like, this is why you don't leave five blots. I understand. That's right. <laughs> it all started with the tiger play. Yeah. The double hit, oh, yeah. double shot. That yeah. was the big swing of the game. <laughs> and now if you can like roll a whole bunch of sixes very quickly, you can salvage six, some sort of game Yes, here. any six yeah. is super. And backgammon as well. Yeah. Like you really want to come out. Yeah, the second six now is huge. It's like yeah. a new midpoint, right? Uh, there's no clever duplication or anything here. What do we do? I guess you're just going to move the back checker around. That's fine. You could... Yeah, there's no clever duplication. Yeah. Okay, it seems to be that's the best play. It's a little bit brutal that uh, you actually make a... Oh, the six. Huge. Oh, yeah. Okay. The four is annoying, but the six yeah. is huge. He'll take it, I'm sure. Yes. Now he needs one more six. <laughs> He's really going to get away with this position. <laughs> 4-3 uh, is a rough one. 
Yeah. What do we it do? We just throw the, the board analysis, away? Uh, the analysis capture here is frozen. So oh, we're yeah. seeing some we old. Seeing 21 to 13. Uh, I'm not sure what position that maybe was. Maybe Wilson, the producer, can yeah. correct it on the fly. We don't know why. But at least we can still see the arrows on the board here. Yeah. Uh, this is the play that I saw here. It's weird to throw your board away like this. Yeah. But I, what else do you have? You have to keep that 17 point. Anchor. Yes. Otherwise, you just lose too many backgammons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's stay put. 3-1, okay, sure, keep that goalkeeper, especially now if he hits with a fly shot, he's leaving three shots on the board, like it, you're kind of happy if White hits for some reason. Yes. Yeah, it's I just, I think he would not do it. Nice squeezing play from yeah. Dick. 5-4, here we go, so we're going to bury two to the ace, I think. I don't think we can afford to hit. Nope. I, it's crazy, but what else can you do? <laughs> you're not going to gain anything from hitting here. Yeah. So don't do that. Well, you certainly lose a lot burying two to the ace, but I think it's yes. the best of, of yeah, the worst. Yeah, but that's, we see the <laughs> arrows there from the yeah. hint uh, yeah, yeah, on the, yeah. the little XG uh, board on the right. Yeah, yeah. And it is the best play. Yeah. It would be pretty crazy to hit here. He's afraid to I do mean, it, I mean, this is even oh, better than hitting, probably. Oh, interesting. But again, he's losing backgammons when he get hit. Yeah. When he gets hit. This is an interesting look, yeah. I didn't think about this play. We He's so likely to have to lose it next play anyway. Oh, that looks black too. I guess these are like relatively close. We can't see the the actual numbers and equities right yes, now. But, it's uh, still frozen. Yeah. Wow, they're both coming up black though, which which indicates in XG that they're like tied kind of plays. That's, uh -huh. that's fascinating. Yes. Yeah. And I, that is fascinating, huh? Yeah. He's really sharp, Mochi. Yeah. Is it possible that I want, I don't know. What's that, 5-2? Five 5-2. Two? Five two. So he's going to bring in, yeah, again, still not afraid of contact. So I think you just keep playing huge and, like, 11-9 to nine is fine. Oh, he's going to do this and keep even more contact. Okay, I like this. Nice. Stay back on the 11 and play 6-4. to four. Uh, 6 out is great. It's going to go all the way to the 12. Oh, it's got to go to the 12, I think. And I, So I didn't want to leave two blots and break that point. But I think just leaving one in a single shot is okay. So I, I like this play, yeah. And he gets away with it, so Dirk is, again, I think contact just keeps feeling right. You can't lose this game from here, so why not leave that checker back? Like, eventually you might regret it, but the natural seeming play is just link 17 to 11. But 3-1, um, I guess, is going to make a point and advance a little bit, reduce the shots. Would it like make any sense to that hit That reduces no. shots the most. Interesting. That's right. He's probably just thinking about reducing shots. Yeah, maybe that is best. Okay, yes. I'm just thinking about That's you might right. as well have a three-point board. It is the best. It's the best. Yeah. So he's not Ooh. only finding good plays; he's finding the best place. Six three is a little awkward. It's a funky roll. Yeah. You might have some sort of. Oh, he could just clear the bar. Okay, maybe this is this does look more beautiful, and it keeps the contact. It keeps putting all this like obnoxious pressure on Mochi. Um, yeah, and look at that. Wait, they're both coming up as blunders now? Okay, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, there. that seems to be a... But the, the blunder setting is very hard, so we don't really know. Yeah. We know it's an error. It's more than 20. But what else? I, could the play be to 11 and then like 7 to 4 or something? I don't know. What is... Yeah. Oh, now oh, this looks normal. It's the blood-leaving play that's the best one. It's it's the blood-leaving oh, play 7 to 4. You wow. leave a blood there. You... Yeah, you don't just care to... about getting hit. It's like a good thing if you get hit. Yeah, that's a hard one to find. It's it hard is... to see how you gain, though. You know, it's just, I guess you want to check her on the floor. Uh, and you I want think to keep the some gain, contact. The gain yeah. is that you get to clear the seven point. Where uh, now yeah, you, that mean, can be a problem. It's not that you're in trouble if you get hit, but it's just slightly inferior if the you could be get, get hit. Uh, yeah, you could get I mean, Yeah. Six and 12. Or at, least, at least Mochi would have a chance to get off the gammon if, yeah. if Dick were to leave a shot here. Four, three, okay. So you just leave the shots when Mochi was super weak and mm -hmm. had two blots in his home board. Yeah. Now Mochi has a three-point board, so it's already getting a little bit better. Soon to be four, only two dead, so he can still close out. Not too likely to do it, but he has to do it backwards too. Of course, he's got the three slotted with the deuce and ace made. Mm -hmm. yeah. Small problem. And look at this, we make the five, okay. That's very productive. Five, four. Dirk's got a little chink in the armor now with an open point. 4-2 is just going to come around.
And yeah, aces are kind of the problem here. He's just looking for a safe clearing roll. The three, I think you want to park now on the on the 20. Yeah, so he's, he's playing the four. He's trying to decide if he wants to make his board or get the double shot. Um, I like the, the thing is, if you don't come to the 20, you can accidentally not have enough freedom to play next roll. So I, I feel like the automatic to me is 23 to 20. And then do I want to come in and leave the double contact or just get to the outfield? Um, we'll see here, though. Yeah, it looks like this is the best play. Of course, sometimes on a 6-4, you're going to get a double shot or something, some sort of 6 that can't safety. 6-1 six, is going to be more interesting, too. Not a lot of downside. 6-3 is a nice shot. Dirk's in the driver's seat, I think, to win yes. a gammon now. 71. No, no, sorry, we can't trust these numbers, sorry. Right. Um, oh, yeah, I made a mistake, too. So do we, okay, so the gammon race now, two, four, six, seven, eight crossovers, and Dirk has yes. not that many checkers off. Eight crossovers from Mochi before this roll, and, and Dirk has ten. a five-roll position. So, so maybe he ten, can't afford ten. to do this. And needs this to is close. The, this is very close. Spend the gammon saving pips, yeah. He, he should and he just finds the best play, it looks like. Yeah, Again, black good on that, play. So. Six deuce, uh, that's going to help the gammon saving cause quite a bit. Yeah, Mochi's about ready to run with another one, too. That's right. So do it. Ooh, three ones is a dis difficult decision for that, though. Do we do it with this? You definitely do it. When the gammon race is this close, I think yeah. you have to spend every single pip you got to save the gammon. But it's two pips. That's all, we, that's all we're losing. We don't even get a crossover out of it. So this is like the weakest example of it, That's I actually think. true. Well, it's right not make... clear that it's right. No, they must be close. I think right? they're close as well. Yeah. I think they're close. Yeah. But uh, you're, you're making a good point. Yeah. I would just and he make just goes. this play as I well. I think this is fine. Yeah. I expect I... it's fine, but we'll see, right? We'll see. Yeah. We, we don't know the PRs now either because yeah. we, we just had a uh, message from the producer, Wilson, that he's going to restart our production here in between after the games. Game. Okay, cool. Uh, so we're going to get the feedback after this game. 4-1, okay, and yeah, Dirk needs to bear off aggressively to make sure he wins the gammon, I think. Yes, Mochi wants to roll big here to save that, that gammon. 2-1, oh, perfect. That's... Two crossovers, wonderful. We're super <laughs> <Yeah>. happy. <laughs> what a roll, huh? <laughs> what is he thinking about here? He has to, I don't know. Oh, oh, is that the, pl uh, that's... That could be the best way to do uh, it now, but I wouldn't it, have thought of it. It's yeah. not the, the recommended play by Hint, because yeah. he's not going to win the game anyway. But it might be that he like, he's so. He would have saved the gammon here. Oh, I, I, that could be a big mistake, actually. But he could be so unlikely to race off the gammon that the contact is the best way to it do it. It wasn't that unlikely. Yeah, it didn't feel like it, but that's what he felt like after. It was shot. not the hint play, and I suspect that that's that was one. potentially a big mistake. Yeah. Okay, this one double four still works. Yep. And so double two also are... works. Aces don't work, but they oh, wouldn't. Oh, he's got all his sets. I see. Yeah, he's got so a, he needs to roll. Aces don't work. Six two doesn't work. That's a gammon. Yeah. Gammon for Dirk Schiemann. And Dirk's leading the match now. Crucial gammon win for Dirk Schiemann. And this is this was not predicted as like a likely score. It's difficult to get <laughs> four away, three away. <laughs> this is a human score. <laughs> yeah, it's because Mochi got his Cuban in time. And Dirk's very much supposed to take. Yes. Oh, what are they laughing about here? This is funny. Know. What are they looking at? I don't know what they're looking at. <laughs> Checking out the clock. Okay. So we're just okay. going to get a restart of the, the system here just to get the refresh the feed that we somehow lost. It's fun that they're in good spirits about it, though. Yes. Yeah. It's always nice to see them having fun and not stressed out by the situation kind of thing, you know? <laughs> So we're back here. We just took a break uh, just to fix the uh, technical issue. It was actually fixed after 20 seconds, but then uh, the players just took a short break here, and Mochi actually went down to change his clothes. <laughs> he's so. got his eye. Uh, he's told me what that means before. It's something about like inner strength or something, I think. It's a okay. cool shirt. Yeah. Maybe like a mantra. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. We had it last year from, oh, double sixes. Hideyagi Weaver's uh, fan yeah. had some cool mantras yeah. on them. So four-way, three-way, this is very likely to be a cube oh. after like almost any sequence other That's than anchoring. That's a horrible roll. Now and we this see one, cube. even for money, this can be a cube, yeah. I think. It's, uh, 
Yeah, the the checkers are dead. So I'm Player not sure what you do with this score. Maybe see. you just throw it away at four way, three way. That's the question. Yeah. That's the question. Let's see what XG says. Yeah, I'm really fascinated by this one. It's got to be such and a he's clear gonna pass cube. It pretty quick. Yeah, I think it must How be fast a pass, is that? Right? That's wonderful. I think it's reasonable. Yeah. Let's see the XG feed here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, pass. it's a pass. Pass has got the circle. Okay. Howdy, partner. Pack your board and head on down to the 9th Texas Backgammon Championships, February 9 to 13th at the Gunner Hotel, San Antonio. See you there. It's a big pass. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it might be a pass 14, for money. Seven, no, no, it's, it's like right in the middle. It's just okay. clear double, clear take. Okay. It, it's very hard for those to be passes for money. Yeah. But, uh, but okay, we're going to play a three-point match. Mm -hmm. Back yes. in expected territory. Down to a three-point match. Yeah. Good uh, pass from Dirk. Yeah. Expect him to find that. That's yeah, a funky sequence. Him. Five three, okay. Yeah, I want to remember to shot. talk about the format again here, but uh, I mean, they've got. We'll wait till we have some kind of space here. They're they're playing yes. quick all of a sudden, you know. Yeah. <laughs> After their break, they got the energy. Pretty standard opening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five maybe two. Do you split into ten? Sure. Yeah, he's got I an think anchor. You so do. You have to. I think you do. Yeah. Yes, exactly. He's got yeah. the advanced anchor, so you must come off your anchor as well. And look at this, Dirk is going to think about a cube already here. Okay. He was thinking about it, but briefly. Did, yeah, but I think he's correct and not doubling. Yeah, and you, it's not intuitive to a lot of newer, oh, that's okay, the, this that's, is legal. Yeah, no. it's, it's, uh, I thought he rewound it incorrectly. But, <laughs> but uh, I think you should make the five point here. Let's yes. see, Ex Extreme Gamma Negris, you should make the five point. Yeah, it's not intuitive to leave the direct six, but that's how strong the five point is. Yes. It's kind of like a nice beginner rule of thumb, right? Just that's do it. Right. <laughs> Don't worry. That's right. This is, I guess you could make the deuce now. What else can you do? Where else do we? Have? The um, other one is like slotting out, I guess. But this this seems this seems like what we must need to do, yeah. It's a, another weird double six for Dirk, but yeah. It's this time awkward, I think it's, it's e okay. e yeah I think it's easier to play this time. Yeah. And is he gonna be okay? Mochi hits back, so we can forget about talks about cubes. That's a great shot. Um, big advantage, and he fans with the fives. Okay. And now with the double shot, Mochi with the pure structure, almost leading in the race. This is, yeah, at three-way, three-way, we've got to be a little more aggressive, so this is probably easier to find than usual. But just looks like a strong positional cube here. Yes. Dirk doesn't have an anchor yet. And uh, is it early enough in the game that he has to take with this close of a race, too? The three-point match is very different from further out in the, in the match. Yes. You want to double more aggressively, and you want to take, or take more conservatively. So drop yeah. more cubes. So the match score is kind of pointing more, um, pointing towards the the drop here. But what's your money action? Uh, if you're not sure, then you probably ought to pass this, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, it doesn't look. It's so early though. There's still three checkers to bring around. I don't think the race is that dead. I can't tell yeah. if we're like caught up with the last roll or not. With I, this I minus think five deficit. I think it's a take for money. Yeah. Um, but I can really see why he's he's thinking deep here. We see him. Yeah. It's only two points too. Get, you know? Getting so. good posture here. Yeah, that's the thing. You you or yeah. in, in a cubeless sense, your take point is quite high. Yeah. No, oh, sorry. This. We've it, got it, the it, circle on the pass here. Okay. So we don't yeah. see the actual output yet, but uh, yeah, okay. and good, it's find a good, the good pass. pass, good pass, yeah. Because he, in in a gamblerless uh, take point is what am I getting high or low? It's a it's a it's a high take point, meaning that he has to drop more. Mm -hmm. That one point to get from three way to two way is not it's not a big point. It's not too valuable compared to other points. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market, available on Amazon. Links in the description below. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. Oh, here's the number. Here's the number yes. two, two, 17 gammon, so it's like eight and a, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's a pretty solid it's, pass, but not, mm. I mean, for a human being, uh, 101 yeah. millipoint is, is not easy, you know? And it's it's, an maybe we forgot to pause the clock when we set up the because I like down at 6.42, now 6.20. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So when we yeah. setting up... Yeah, could easily be now it has happened. But nobody told anything, so... 
<laughs> yeah, but I can give you 20 seconds. Yeah, no, 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 it's fine. I think six minutes is too short. I'm okay. fine, I'm fine. Okay. So last of all. Last of all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You think or what? Uh, no, no, you, oh, you just argue with it. Right. I, I think it's... <laughs> Still having fun. That's always nice. Yeah. Uh, double threes. Okay. This, uh, we've seen Mochi start with this before. That's Can, a good one. Can play his anchor, so I think you make the two board points, and you've yes. lost the checker on the midpoint, so you're not as inclined to make the ten. So I, it seems like a. I liked his idea of a fast yes. five and three. That's yeah. right. Yeah. We have a little bit of a lag in the analysis uh, section, but at least it's updating now. It's not frozen like it was before. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it'll get better with. So we're primed Time. now, so we must need to split. Do we split all the way, or That's do we bring the, the two down? I kind of like the unstack. Yeah, I you want to be on attack here. Yeah, it's such a high priority to unstack the midpoint. I'm curious to see. Right, it's the though. best play. Yeah, very wow. good play. Very good play by oh, Dick. Point oh three. Oh, I'm okay. not sure about plus, plus. Okay, okay, okay. That's good though. It's yeah. close. I'm surprised he knows to even look for that. And yes. like the hit and the split seems pretty trivial here, but I agree. Um, Oh, the pick and pass. Actually, it seems to be a close. The pick and pass is the better. The hit and lift. Wow. Yeah, 13 millipoint mistake. To, I would make your Jeez. play, Nick. Yeah. I would just play pure. How do we do this? Uh, Score-based thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it wins more gammons to leave it there. Yeah, this is that's pretty purely score. Yes, it wins more gammon and might lose a little bit less gammon as well. I think, yeah. But you're sacrificing some winning plays. What about yeah. this one? Is that the double hit? Double tiger. You ah. can't split your back checkers. So it's either play passively it must be or at double the score hit. if the last one was it then yeah. how can we double hit at the score two away again i'm not sure about this this like you don't get the <laughs> same upside as the problem so i'm in, i'm inclined to play quiet winning the race too you know yes. xg confirms it's uh, 13 5 yeah it's oh it's very 25 close milli very point. close yes so for money this should be Probably more reason, like the double hit is probably better by a decent margin. I guess it's not clear. It's, it's very, yeah, it's very close as well. Yeah. Um, I, I, the thing is that Mochi actually has a blitzing formation after that mm. Dilly Builder ended up on the three point. Which is funny to so, make that play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he made it the play. Oh, I mean, the fan. I, okay. I love that he made the play actually. It's such a cool play. Yeah. And look at this. Now all of a sudden he's got a priming formation. And it's so likely at this score that he's oh. going to be playing till the end, too. There's not. Yeah. It's hard to find a cube at two away. He's either just going to be too good or not good enough. Yes. And this is interesting. Do you hit or make the structure? Oh, both are so good. But that structure, the rack, is just the most powerful structure. Yeah, you got to make the structure here according to XG. Yeah. We see the arrows on the board I'm indicating. I'm so inclined to send a checker back and make the bag. You freeze that checker on the three, two. This makes the most sense to me. Yes. Wow, but it does seem to be an error. It, okay. It's a, it's an error. We don't know how big it is. We will One know. Six and, comes right out. Okay. Yeah, we will know in a second. Um, six is going to be two down. That was a huge error from Bliak. Three hundred and fifty-nine. Wow. Three fifty-nine, and I totally see the wow. logic in that play too. That surprises me. The rack is so powerful. Huh. Holy moly! Yeah. Three hundred and fifty blunder. Yeah. On a checker play. That's pretty huge. So this seems to be a a wrap. In terms of PR point in this yeah. match, Dieck is off to a bad start. This 2-1 is interesting, too. I think he's already hit the, the clock. In the, okay, and so Dieck's got to figure out if he has anything at the score. I, I just doubt it. Three checkers uh, back, but you can think about it. Yeah. But the 2-1 was fun. It's uh, Someone might be inclined to make the 23 or something like that, but uh, just stepping up to the 22 is better. 23 is not the anchor you want when opponent has any sort of priming potential, which yeah, clearly Dieck does here. And Mochi... Can, he's allowed to make a bolder play, which this pl the stepping up to the 22 is, because yeah. he has the stronger inner board and a mm -hmm. strong prime formation. So we started to talk about with the format earlier too. Um, of course, Mochi is winning the PR point here. Whoever ends this match with the better PR will get one point for that. Whoever wins the match itself will get one point. And they're going to play 12 matches across three days wow. to figure that out. And, oh, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you again, Nick, but yeah. we he, Dieck does find the cube here, and I'm very curious to see what... Looking at these what numbers, it looks very reasonable. It's like slightly over 50, and like in the teens of Gammon's, like simple take, but technically, yeah, 0.033 incorrect. Um, but but that's just on 3-ply, too. I think uh, there's a good chance that this is a good cube. Um you don't really so have to be, if you think yeah, you're a favorite, yeah. then you should just whip it. According to XG, it's a small mistake, but it's not yeah. a it's not a big one. Thirty three milli points. Um, there is volatility. It was just slightly too underdeveloped yeah. uh, of a front position for Dieck, even though he has to double extremely aggressive at three away, two away. Yeah. 
This is never the roll that you want to roll afterwards, um, <laughs> but this is the best he can do. He's yes, just going to clean up a little. Um, but yeah, so Dirk, of course he's losing the PR point. It feels like a good one to do that. He wants to find something bigger after sending the cube. It's so hard to make this stiff play and just feel like you're, like, he, I think he can sense that he's losing after it. So he wants to find something better. And this is why he's looking at this, but this is just worse. That's you know? right. It's I think hard that's to, exactly right. feels like such a mistake to send the cube and you're then roll giving, the 6-5. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You're giving away too many good, sh oh, he's looking at this one. This one I didn't even think about. Yeah, but um, I mean... They're bad. They're just overplays, but it's so, again, it's just so hard to stack 11 to 6. I like that he's looking at it because this yeah. might be the best way to win the game. Yeah. Actually, it seems that it's no. not. Oh, no. That's, yeah. seem, that's a 52 mm -hmm. uh, mistake here. This Because you get good sixes and good aces, and One the sixes were kind of the bad. Well, you had an anchor before, too. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so uh, this must advance, I think, 24 to 22. But I guess the other option would be coming up to the 20. Again, Mochi could find a ball play here, which would be stepping up to the 20 point. Wow. Yes, it is the right play. How do you do that? It's it like, well, right it's play. super close for, we'll see what yes. it is on plus plus. But at this score, you must be really inclined to make the anchor, too, and just try not to lose a gammon. Um, but again, Dirk's theory, he says he has trouble with these two, is like deciding when to make the 22 and knows he needs to do less. And look at this, Mochi does find the 20 split. That's sharp. 5-4 is a fan, okay. Mochi's in good shape to uh, win the match here now. He is. The ace is a little bit awkward, but it's not uh, too 24 bad. 24 to 23 isn't yeah, too bad here. That's not too bad. You don't usually prefer it. Yeah, I guess you'd rather that's not fine. play it if you could avoid it, but yeah. Yes. All right, and a fan. But yeah, so even though you know it might feel like this is a good match for for Dirk to to be playing like at the high end of his PR range, just because he's going to lose the PR point anyway. But but this format, should they end it after twelve matches at twelve points to twelve points, the tiebreaker goes to overall PR. So this is going to affect his tiebreaker chances quite a bit to be having a off match in this first one. So it's still relevant. It's easier to forget that. Um, That's right. The average PR likely, yeah. is uh, quite valuable. Oh, what a shot from Dirk here. Hits and makes the anchor uh -huh. in the driver's seat again <laughs> against four checkers back. So what is the three's going to clean up? Okay. Not bad. Yeah, and I think I think Dirk's favorite here, right? Even against the better board. He has the racing lead, yeah. uh, which is pretty important. Um, it's Ooh. probably pretty close, actually. What do we do with this? Just dump to the deuce? I don't he see anything He has to leave better. a shot. That's the weakness of Dirk's position. Yeah. He has to leave a shot. Oh, so he's going to try to clear a point. Okay, he gets returns. I think I like this play. Yeah, yeah good play from Dirk. Good play. He's going to leave eights as well, but you yes. might as well take the chance to clear something. Sure. Okay. Um, what is Mochi looking for here? I think he's got to keep his anchor, but like what's... Are there maximum contact type plays? He's fairly close in the race, so I don't think he has to overplay this. It's not a trivial play. No. Had he, he been ahead in the race, it would have been easy to just run out. He's still yeah. going to be down six pips. He is down. He might be happy to leave shots around in pressure blots. He, he's you know? not too worried about leaving shots. That's that's for yeah. sure. He can leave shots. He has to find out what play is more flexible. And what play do I still preserve my racing equity? Mm. Because the race is going to be close. So I think he does Maybe. worry about shots. And I think that's yeah. why you make this play. That's because it's true. a six-pip race afterward. That's right. I, I, I agree, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was a good play from Dirk. Yeah. Very good play. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 13 to 7 is simple. We're happy to save the blot. Yes. 3-2 is going to, sure. I guess you're just going to try not to ruin your position. Um. 3-2 for Dirk. I think we're sticking with the... He's not that far ahead in the race, but he's well outboarded. Even with those two blots on board, I think he just has to find something safe. And look at this, 7-2. to two. It's not a terribly intuitive move. Stacking up the 4 is okay as well. Feels weird to throw a blot behind the checkers when you might want to attack at some point. 5-3 um, is awkward. What do we do with this? We either leave a shot to clear the the 18, or we have to start destroying our six point, I think. I don't see him coming off the anchor. Yeah, so he starts with six to ace, and then what's our best three? Sure, okay. Six to one, five to two. Yeah, six to one, five to two makes some sense too, but both of them were just thrown away our board. Uh, six one is gonna, I guess just to the ace. Yeah, I think you wanna keep one outside to keep a safe six. Usually that's like a, you know, another one of those like, old school kind of overthinking kind of plays. You don't actually want to uh, 
like like the duplication focus, but here it's pretty relevant. It really does seem to be the key focus is can he hold out long enough to not leave a shot. Uh, fours is very interesting. What do we do with this? Yeah, just maximum contact. Okay, I like it. Oh, fours is a great shot for deer. <laughs> now this a... isn't going to be an attacking role. He's just going to come around and race, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this looks the best to me. I I don't think you want to... You're still outboarded even though your opponent's made some... You know, like inefficiencies in board there and had to yeah. switch to the ace. If he goes into a hitting contest, which is in a board strength, is actually an asset. Yeah, that there's no way to cover board. that ace no. point blot either. And so. the key is the race. Yep. Dirk is going to be ahead nine pips, therefore he should just make the running play. He's got to be sure of that too before he does it. Yeah. That's right. So he want to count. count the race, yeah, yeah, all that stuff, that's right. And he want to look at the blitzing plays as well, but I'm pretty sure that he's just going to make the 10 point here yeah good mm -hmm. play mm -hmm. going for a straight race oh, oh what a shot won't in the oh, driver's wow. seat again that's a joker that is a joker it's looking like a 2-0 lead most likely it could be unless some double three is great he's yeah. back in the race it's not over yet yeah. unless some backgammon happens right yes two point two points in the overall <laughs> match set unless unless <laughs> dice are dice uh, two crossovers seems reasonable. Yeah, in whatever way. That's Super close race. Okay, anybody's race now. Uh, do we unstack the four here? Sure. Just take a distribution ace. Seems good. Five one is gonna bring a checker in. This is like the most stressful position you can be in. Is in Dirks here, where you're just like trying to hang on to be a favorite in the match or you lose now right never feels good yes if uh if mochi can win this race it's an easy yeah. two two zero win here in match one yeah and if he loses he's still got huge winning chances in the room in the match so that's right this is the kind of gamble you want to take uh, and of course the players they don't know the pr scores of the match so yeah. far they have no idea. I have a feeling I couldn't see like Mochi's face perfectly, but I have a feeling he knows the cube error and probably feels very good about his chances. Yes. That 300 is a big one. Yes, you know? that's true. And the double yeah. aces was a huge decision as well, the blunder yeah. from Dirk. Maybe you they, ma I mean, I'm very sure Mochi knew that Dirk was dropping a take, but the double ones, maybe he did not really yeah. think too much about it. You know, right. it's a, th that was, there was a decision there. Yeah. Um, I also think that Dirk had a, more difficult time in this match than Mochi did. Yeah. Oh, great shot from Mochi. Oh, wow. Double three is going to be a 2 0 win here in match one. Looking like it. Yes. Yeah. What is there other than 5 to 3? There we go. Mm -hmm. Unless the double one is not good enough. No, what can he? So now he's looking to maximize have to take something. A checker off, I think. I don't know though. Yeah, it's almost yeah. doesn't matter what you well, play. Well, you can get like a two off kind of roll and then a set to win. Just feels like six checkers That's is right. better than seven. So a double sixes, and then yeah. you just need to take two checkers off. Okay. All right. He has a ch theoretical chance here. Yeah. Deuces is that good? No, no that's not, not good, good enough. enough. Well, the two on two, two on sequence two is one. still a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Point nine 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 nine. Yeah, just in case. there is a milli point there. Yeah, a, a, apparently one in a thousand times, Dia can pull That's a off lot. a win. <laughs> That's a lot of times. Sometimes in these, when we're calculating whether or not it's possible, like usually it's less than, yeah, than one in a thousand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's not even that free. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, she did half the work there. With yeah. The two one. Shaking, shaking, shaking. Five oh, one. that's going to oh, be it. That's a 2 0 win for Mochi here. Yeah. Okay, so we're off uh, match one here. We, we saw some great uh, ad advertisements here along the way. We saw the new uh, Galaxy Mobile app coming right up. We saw some new cool books coming up and uh, some UBC Contender Tournament in April uh, in a joint tournament with the Istafta uh, annual tournament. It's going to be a huge tournament. And yeah. the UBC Contender Tournament is playing alongside of that. So we hope to see a lot of strong players coming to this event. What do you think about the match, uh, Nick, here, match number one? That's, uh, Mochi's gonna be happy with it. Dirk's gonna be disappointed, of course. But um, specifically, just with that, like, 
Mochi's on his game. We've seen, like, he's, yes. he knows his last couple years, like, he hasn't performed on day one. And he's, I mean, he's doing it this time, it feels like, you know, this just feels like his A game. That's right. That was one of the narratives, whether Mochi would continue to play bad on day one and then play yeah. superhuman day two and three. But uh, so far, he's up to, off to a yeah. great start. And these, uh, I think, Dirk's mistakes, the, the prime versus prime pass, I think it's easy to just make an oversight there, miscalculate, think you're looking at a different reference and be off by a whole window. Um, the aces was confusing. You know, you can yes. give good reasons for playing it that way. So uh, We're going to have some blunder analysis mistakes. by uh, Grandmaster Michi. Oh, so cool. maybe he's going to have a yeah. look at some of those positions. So let's wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching and uh, see you tomorrow for match number two. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting. I'm ready. Yes. Good. <laughs> All See right. you guys. Bye. Are you ready to roll the dice? Now we have a UBC master analysis. I picked up one position uh, from today's match. Okay, before that, I'm going to introduce my latest book, Backchecker Strategy. In this book, I categorize back checker formation in five, to five groups. In each group, I explained the idea how to handle back checkers and how to treat our own side of the board. All right. So now I sh I'm going to show you the position. The score is 3 0, and white is in a very tough situation. White leaves many blots, and blue has a super strong fight prime. Okay, both checkers are on the bar, and Mochi is white, and he wrote 3 6 from the bar. How do you play this 6 3? Okay, three is easy, of course, but half to come in, comes in from the bar, and then how to play a six? That's a question. White has multiple options coming out, covering the bar point, tidying a block on the eight point, or attack on the ace point. Yep. There are many options. But the point is, white should not stick on the back game because white does not have timing. You know, when we play back game, we should be very much behind in the race, like 50 pips, 70 pips, or maybe 100 pips. But here, white is not so behind in the race. That's why if white keeps these four back checkers, white will be in a big problem. White just crunch his home board. That's why white has to come out to the outfield to get freedom. Yeah, once blue dances, that's possible because white has three point board. So with nine numbers out of 36, blue will dance. So in that case, white has a very, very nice pr uh, perspective. White might cover his four point blot. Now, his inner board will be four points board, which is pretty strong. In, yeah, let's say covering the bar point. Okay, bar point has some value. However, white has four back checkers behind the five prime. Yeah, he's likely crunch his phone board as long as he doesn't roll a six. It will be, it will be a big problem. So let's abandon back game and get freedom. Yes, freedom is a key word in this position. Did you get it? Do you like it? Okay. See you tomorrow. Thank you very much.
The UBC is produced by Backgammon Galaxy. Play among the stars.